All right. So welcome, everybody. Um, this is a, a quick introduction to Question Jam, and people are continuing to join us as we get started here today. Um, if you are new to this community, the community we're hosting this in is called the Meeting Innovation Community. We host experimental free workshops three, four, sometimes five times a month. Hi, Chris. Hi, Bruce. Um, and it's lovely to see you all today. We're going to explore the power of questions with uh, Dr. Pia Loritzen, who will show us Question Jam and how that works. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. And then um, at the end, we'll have just, we'll stick around for a couple minutes to catch any questions or feedback. So with that, thank you so much for bringing this to us. We are looking forward to seeing what you got. Thank you so much, Elise. And thank you so everybody for showing up today. Uh, Marie and I are very excited to introduce you to Question Jam. It's a completely new uh, digital product that we launched uh, a month ago, beta launched. So, so you're among the first uh, to, to get introduced to this tool. And I think uh, I will just start by sharing my screen, telling you very briefly about what is the tool about. Um, and then we will do a Question Jam together all of us, um, and then uh, you will have a chance to share your uh, experience and your input and feedback and questions and answers. And it's a free tool. So the second you think this is interesting, you can just sign up and start using it in your own uh, meetings and workshops and whatever you do. So, um, so that's the plan. I will share my screen. So do you see my screen now? I think you do, right? You do, great. So um, let me just show you that and tell you that um, Question Jam is a meeting game. Um, it's a seven minute meeting game. So uh, it's uh, something you do to boost your meeting, to get everybody, um, um, make it easy for everybody to air their voices and, and, and tell uh, what's on their mind and what they think is important in a fun and, and easy way. So, um, is my screen, there it was. Um, getting people together to solve problems and find solutions together. That's the idea. It works like this. Uh, you have a meeting leader, today it's me, um, set, choosing a topic that you would like people to discuss with each other, uh, setting the stage saying, uh, today I've picked meetings that are worth our time. As a, as a topic uh, we should discuss with each other, then everybody uh, join the jam by using their phone or uh, writing, um, uh, writing a code into a, to a web page, but it's, it doesn't uh, require any login or anything. You can just immediately uh, join. For seven minutes, we exchange questions and answers with each other about the topic. We do that in silence. Um, and uh, that's uh, very... Um, Deliberately, it's because we think that as a lot of meetings and workshops, there's a lot of talking and typically uh, a few people talking a lot and a lot, not, um, a lot of people listening. So making it um, an exercise where we take time to reflect and do some writing instead, use our bodies, use our fingers to create something together is very um, part of it is part of the purpose of doing it this way. After the seven minutes, um, the jam just stops. And we get a shared result uh, in a word cloud showing uh, what we came up with and we can explore that together. So, so that's a very simple um, exercise a question gem is. As I mentioned, I would suggest that our topic is, uh, is meetings that are worth our time. In a second, I will uh, share uh, the screen where you can see how to log in uh, or how to join the, the jam. And I suggest that you uh, that you sign up with your uh, name and uh, and maybe where you come from, uh, so we can uh, easily find each other. In a jam, we ask a question and choose which one of the other participants we want an answer from. So it's tapping into a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions, questions and answers uh, interactions, and that's why it can be uh, nice to know uh, a name and and maybe where people are coming from. Then we exchange questions and answers in silence, and then we look at the output together. Okay, so now I'm ready to jam with you. Um, so if you have any questions or comments before I go to the jam page, please let me know, okay? Then I will share this with you. 
So you can use your phone or you can use your uh, computer um, going to questiongem.it and writing the passcode. Um, you can also, that's the easiest thing, just use the QR code uh, with your phone um, and then you will be able to, to join the jam. So I'm not even sure how many people we are and how many, do you know that Elise? How many people are supposed to? Uh, it looks like we're 13 all together. Yes, then I think maybe we are missing one. Is anybody having troubles joining? I think it might be you. We might be. Oh, no, you're there. Let's see. Okay. Then I think we should just start jamming. Um, and as I mentioned, we, we jam in silence. So um, I have uh, nothing more to say, but happy jamming. See you in seven minutes. That's it. So thank, thank you so much for jamming with us. Um, now uh, you can see on, the, on my screen uh, the result and I will take a look at that in a minute. But before I do that, I would love to hear some uh, reactions, uh, experiences, comments, questions, anything from you. I thought it was pretty fun and I, I enjoyed it. It was... Uh... It was cool to be forced to continue to come up with new questions about meetings um, to just try and go deeper. So what about the rest of you? Any I comments? Think, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I think Pedro had his hand up first. Uh, yes, if I may. Um, actually, thank you very much. It was very interesting. I liked it very much. My question is, is it also um, applicable in other languages? Uh, right now, only Danish and English. So, oh, yeah. thank you. So we, <laughs> but it should be fairly easy to introduce it into other languages. But right now, we're just finding out: is this something that people would be interesting in in using? I see. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. So I think for me. I, when you said there would be a word cloud, I was, I think, expecting to see other people's questions. Because if I were using this, I would want to be able to have participant. I mean, I would want to use it as a collective brainstorm and with Q&A so that I, you could see all of the questions with all of the answers. Great. So um, let's just move right on to that. Um, because the next thing we encourage people to do using this tool is to uh, ask the participants, the players, that's you guys, to look at the word cloud and tell us uh, right in the chat uh, if you see any words that you would be interested in exploring further. So if everybody just take a look at the word cloud and then write in the chat the words you, oh, the word, the one word, two words you would be most curious to explore. Bruce, you raised your hand. Yeah, I'm just going to offer a word, uh, worth. Worth. So what you do is now we just take uh, Bruce's uh, word um, as the first one, that we can click the, the word, Linda, so you can see. And now I can see all the questions and answers, including that word. So. We would explore in the meeting. We would say, okay, Bruce, uh, you were curious about that word. Let's look at um, all the questions and answers that included that word. That's actually a lot. <laughs> so so we, can, uh, we can do that and explore and say, how much is your time worth? As long as I'm learning or contributing, it's worth my time. How do you know if meeting participants feel that a meeting has been worth their time? Ask them. This is such an important checkout question and a pre-work question. We should ask people before they attend if they think it would be worth their time. So we can actually explore all the questions and answers by clicking the different words. And if we were just, let's say we were only four people in a jam or five people in a jam, we would typically click here to show them all. And then simply go through the questions and answers and invite people to comment on what they see. So let's say that Bruce 
he chose the word uh, worth, I would ask Bruce, uh, when you see these questions and answers, what are your comments? What are your thoughts? Is this what you thought the worth words would be about? Or do you have any other thoughts? So inviting people to, to, uh, to, to share their thoughts about their uh, specific interests when it comes to this uh, topic. So, so that's a way, Linda, to, to explore the, the collective output. And you can also uh, download the data. So you get an Excel, field, uh, Excel uh, file with all the questions and answers. So you can actually work with them. Uh, you can print it or you can share it with your uh, meeting participants and, and working with that going forward. So, so that's how it works. Yes, Bruce? Yeah, with uh, the screen that we're, you're on right now, yeah. is that only for the leader? Because yeah. I don't have it on my... Yeah, so, okay. so that's, a, that's a, the main screen, so to speak. So, uh, and that's why we have the download uh, also, because then you can, you can send uh, the questions and answers to your participants. But it's, it is a meeting tool. So the idea is that you have a main screen where people have their uh, attention, but for seven minutes... You, you kind of put that on hold and let people join these one-on-one -on -one, um, interactions. I think, Laura, did you raise your hand? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Um, I've been having glitches with my connections here. Um, is it possible to run this at the beginning of the meeting and then let a co-facilitator cluster the questions so that you can be brief with it later? Because it, um, if you have a, like 20 people in a meeting, this could be an awful lot of questions to wade through together. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I love your suggestion. I think it's a great idea. Um, and we've been, we have another uh, tool called Quest uh, that is a, more focused on the analytics. So, so then you exchange questions and answers over a period of time of maybe a, a week or something like that. So people have more reflection time and they can, you know, ask an answer whenever uh, it suits them. And, and part of the analytic uh, in, in that product is that you, as you say, cluster, uh, you, you, you make some theme sorting, you look at the kind of questions people have been asking. Have they only asked how questions and what questions, for instance, or do they also ask why questions and stuff like that? So you can do all kinds of interesting analytics uh, based on this kind of data. But for a meeting, I would say that your suggestion is a great idea to have you know, two meeting uh, leaders uh, if you have more than 10 people um, to look into the, to the results. Pedro? Uh, yes, um, my question is about the process. You know, and my understanding is that, you know, in the beginning when you are asking a person, it is just one person that you can select. It's not possible to ask two people or more than that to ask, to answer my question. Uh, am I right? Or it is just my, you know, my- Yeah, my... That, is, that is correct. It's, um, we, we, we very much cherish the one-on-one -on -one interaction because we think there's so much one-to-many uh, communication and social platforms and in, in meetings, we have a lot of this uh, logic of having one per person asking a lot of different people questions. So having tapping into these one-on-one uh, -on -one, peer to peer uh, interactions is, is part of the, um, the idea, having that. Yeah, great. Topic. And in line with Laura's question, so at the beginning of a session, maybe people are not familiar with each other. So how can they select the person because they don't know who's who? Yeah. So what we what we typically do is that we ask people to write, you know, it can be their company or it can be their profile, something they, they write about themselves in a in a bracket after their name. And then we just, you know, invite people to be curious about uh, each other. And, and if you don't know uh, who to ask because you don't know the other people, then you would just choose a ran random person. Um, and and it, it's mostly about focusing on the questions that are in the room and helping people uh, look at the answers together, the possible answers together. So thank you, Petra. Linda? Yeah, I, so kind of along the lines of adding to Pedram's question about you know, an open, open forum like this where we don't know each other versus like an intact team. I'm thinking of a team that I have where I'm confident most of the questions would be directed to one or two people like the leaders of the group. 
And therefore those, those folks never get the opportunity to answer the question because they're always having questions directed to them. And when I was inside the tool, when a question was directed to me, I had no option to continue asking questions. I might have 10 questions in the back of my head and never get an opportunity to answer, ask them because, you know, if I were in a meeting and I was the leader of the group, many questions might come to me instead. Yes. Yeah. So we actually tried to, to, um, to deal with that in the way as some of you might notice the, when you have to choose a recipient, you can see some of the recipients are being busy. That means they are in the middle of writing an answer already. So you're being just, you, you cannot have a lot of questions waiting for you. You will just be, uh, you're busy. And the second you're done, you will be able to ask a question um, unless someone else has uh, right in the second ask you a question. So I think the flow for every participant will be a bit like you experienced it. You will be able to ask some question and answer some questions. And the whole idea of calling it question jam is actually that we don't sit with 10 questions in our head, just waiting to, you know, put them out there, but that we influence each other, that we impact each other. So now I got a question, now I give an answer, and now I ask a new question. So we are, we are jamming uh, on each other's questions and answers. That's the whole idea. Yeah, on that front, there's a, um, a related, I think, related exercise that I've been trying to figure out how to do online for the longest time, um, which is uh, the sequen sequential question and inquiry diagramming. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So basically, you'd have something like this. And once you see the answers, people could then click them and then ask a follow on question. Right. Like you basically it's a it's a seed for another round. How, is that something you're playing with as a as a future iteration or, or where are you, where do you see this going? Yeah, so we would really love all the all the feedback and ideas and input you would have because it is a completely new. Uh, this meeting game is it's, it's new for us as well. We've been building technology for organization development, uh, strategic uh, execution, implementation and organizational uh, and leadership development as, as well. So it's new for us, this meeting, uh, this yeah, meeting game. Um, so all the input uh, we could get, we would have an uh, idea that people would like to maybe vote, uh, you know, look at the question. So when the question game closes, we would be, uh, each participant would be uh, presented to some of the questions and being able to prioritize together. What are the questions we would like to give attention to? <laughs> Um, and second round, you know, being able to actually say, uh, this is something we would like to discuss in another forum, or this is something we should discuss in plenum, or, you know, having these kind of uh, inviting people to, uh, to prioritize and qualify uh, the output. Um, that's some of the ideas we've been having. But all the input you have, please share it with us. Um, okay. I'm Excellent. not... Sure. Let's see. Um, let me just go back to uh, to my slides and just tell you that it should be very easy. Now, I'm actually looking at the chat. I don't know. Is there a problem, Marie, right now with signing up? Um, no, but it, it turns out that some corporate firewalls block the page and I'm ah, okay. unsure why. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll look into that and maybe you have to do some shenanigans to go around a firewall. <clears throat> okay. That's why I'm on, that's why I'm on my, my home computer now, but I did check it over on my corporate computer. And But interestingly, the questionjam.it passes through. So I would, I would create the code and log in at home, create the code, and then I could still use it at the okay. office to get the questions, but it would just be some juggling um, that is uncomfortable. Yeah. So if we can get that fixed, that would be great. Um, the only other suggestion I had is like, at the end there, you said it's a hard stop at seven minutes. Uh, but what that what that created for me was then, okay, when I got to, it was about a minute left, then I just stopped. Rather, if someone was in the midst of typing, to let that finish might be helpful to encourage the full use of the seven minutes, because otherwise you say, well, I might be able to yeah. bang out the question, but not fair to send it to someone and, and have it go unanswered. So. Okay, thanks. Um, 
it should be easy to go on questiongem.com, create an account. And, and what you saw, you know, with the topic is it, that's actually the only thing you need to do. Choose a topic, uh, write it in there and then share your screen like I did. So, so it should be, uh, it should be easy. Um, we have some guides on the web page uh, on, on how to do things and how to use the tool, but we would just encourage you to just try it out. Uh, and um, we are out of time, but this is usually what we would uh, end doing, asking you simply, who are you going to join with uh, and when and about what? Um, but uh, Elise, I want to be respectful of, uh, of the time. Um, so so um, on that front, uh, I put in the link to feedback. Uh, that's anonymous feedback. I will make sure that uh, the this team gets all of the details that you send, and then we'll of course post the uh, aggregate feedback in the with the recording. Would you be open to sending me a copy of your slides so that we can post those too, so people can have all right, fabulous. Um, and then we are as as mentioned at the end of our official half hour. So in the future. Um, you can expect all of those things to be posted in the community and we have many more events planned for September and a couple more coming onto the schedule here soon. We look forward to seeing you again in the future and anybody who would like to stay and continue to provide some feedback if um, Pia and Mar Marie you have time, um, you are very welcome. We'll, we'll hold this space open. So, but for those of us who planned a half an hour, thank you so much uh, for jamming with us. Yay, experiments! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.